Before I turn the microphone over to Herzi Simakov, president of the Menachem Begin Heritage Center, our host for this evening, permit me also to acknowledge the presence of Professor Moshe Ahrens. I don't know where you are sitting, Misha. But we're all most honored to have you with us. And also, Mr. Robert Singer, uh, Robert is here, here in the corner, who is the CEO of the World Jewish Congress. Thank you very much, Robert, for being with us here this evening. And now, without further ado, I turn the microphone over to Herzi Mako. Thank you, Mr. Weinbaum, the appropriate MC for this evening. Uh, Your Excellency, Minister Sretina, Foreign Minister of the Republic of Poland, Ambassador Jacek Khodorovic, the Ambassador of Poland to the State of Israel, Ambassador Ronald Loder, the President of the uh, World Jewish Congress. Uh, may I add that I welcome Chief, uh, not Chief, not yet at least, Supreme Court Justice Eliakim Rubinstein, who joined us and uh, had a role in the resumption of the uh, relationship between Israel uh, and Poland. Uh, as Professor Arens was the Minister of Foreign Affairs in that instant of uh, history. Uh, the history of the Jewish uh, nation, the Jewish people in Poland is a very long one and rich one. It's a story of more than 1,000 years of Jewish presence in Polish, a land that became the most important community of the Jewish diaspora, the largest and the central community. It's an history that almost end in the darkest moment of our history and maybe the darkest moment of the history of the humankind during the Holocaust. But we, the Jewish people, our destiny is to survive and we rise, raise from the ashes and build a new state, an old new state here in the land of Israel. And even in that endeavor, the Polish government and the Polish people, time after time, were alongside with the Jewish people. It started in the late 30s of the previous century, when the Polish government supported by ammunition and by training member of the uh, Irgun, the underground, that fought the British government, which refused to uh, fulfill their mandate to build a Jewish homeland in the land of Israel. And after the war, after the darkest moment, in 48, the Polish government were the, one of the first to recognize the state of Israel, and if I'm not mistaken, the first Israel embassy abroad, which was open, was in Poland. We, we had a, a kind of a break during the communist regime, and the, 25 years ago, the relationship were resumed. And when we look back in history, we have to say that be, beside those facts that I mentioned, we have to salute the Polish people, which maybe is the only uh, nation in Europe that were able to look back to their past and do a self-examination of history with integrity and with dignity. We don't forget the dark time. We can't and we shouldn't. But in order to see the whole picture, we remember with joy the good times, the flourishing of the community in Poland, the culture, the literature that was created there. 
And since the Menachem Begin Center was established, we uh, had a great relationship, started with the previous ambassador and continue with the current ambassador. And I hope that this uh, legacy will continue of relationship between the Menachem Begin Heritage Center and uh, the Polish Embassy. And I think that there was no uh, important guest from Poland, including the president, um, which I just heard that he lost the election. Well, democracy doesn't work always. Uh, uh, that came here and gave as an historian lecture about the Jewish-Polish uh, relations. Uh, and we all salute the memory of this hero that we are going to see the movie uh, later uh, this evening. I wish you all a good and pleasant evening, and thank you very much. It is now my great pleasure to call uh, to the microphone His Excellency Foreign Minister Schetina. Pani Minister, zapraszam mi serdecznie do mikrofonu. Dear Director Markov, ladies and gentlemen, first let me express my gratitude to the Begin Center and uh, to Director Markov personally for hosting us here today, today's evening and for working with us over the course of the last weeks to make it, it happen. It was the issue and it, w it, it was the challenge and thank you for, for, for that. I'm delighted to be part of it and it, to take this opportunity to share with you some thoughts about Polish-Jewish relations, their past, present and, and future. Uh, you are about to watch a documentary that tells the story of a Pole who took every effort to stop the Shoah and who eventually became an honorary Israeli citizen. It uh, demonstrates how passivity, indifference and the lack of empathy can lead to anti-cable horror. We will see this, the interviews with leading World War II historians. And it's, the conclusion is clear, hundreds of thousands of human beings could have been saved if it were not for the lack of insensitivity of the world stop politicians back in the 40s. Karski and the Lords of Humanity by Sławomir Greenberg. It's a must see not only for historians, not only for Poles or Israelis. It should be watched by every official in every government administration on this planet. For it shows how one man can make a difference, how one man can strive to save thousands and make their rescue possible. Possible. Let us not forget that the history of European Jews didn't start with Hitler, Eden, or Roosevelt. We will see this on the film. Nor did the history of Polish Jews start with the German Nazi death camps and the mobile killing units. It started uh, thousands years earlier with hundreds and thousands of Jewish families seeking refuge in the young Polish state as they fled Western Europe during the First Crusade and its pogroms. Jews in Poland were instrumental in creating Poland's financial system and establishing our inter international trade ties, build up our policy, build up the Poland. They contributed immensely to Polish culture and developed their own parliamentary body called the Council of Four Lands towards the end of the 16th century. And this millennium-long Polish-Jewish coexistence, the best illustrated at the Museum of the History of Polish Jews, Jews in Warsaw, whose core exhibition opened last October. We've talked to Mr. Lauda about, about this ceremony. We were together in Warsaw these days. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be guardians of memory, of this memory. 
at the time when the last witnesses of World Second World War are passing away. It's of the utmost importance to make sure that the stories are heard and history is told. Having said that, I want to make clear that remembering history without at the same time looking forward and monitoring potential threats to freedom and democracy seems much like an academic exercise. Indeed, it's our moral obligation to defend and welcome diversity, especially as we witness the great revival of Jewish life in Poland. There are now dozens of Jewish communities and Jewish cultural centers with hundreds of new members. Most of them young people are discovering their Jewish roots. We need to give support to young Poles, Jews, and Israelis who want to get to know each other more closely. People to people, relations deserve our honest and concrete backing. That is because Poland is proud of its Jewish renaissance. The history of, of Polish Jews didn't come to an end with the Shoah. Still small in number, but strong in its will to grow, this community is part and parcel of Polish society. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, I wish to take the opportunity to thank the, our partners, supporters about this evening, about the firm, company ASECO and, and Israeli subsidiary Matrix IT may, for making this evening possible. Thank you very much for that. These businesses are great examples for our Polish-Israeli cooperation, its new technologies and innovation. Their success should serve as an inspiration to others looking to expand our mutual business relations. And so wherever you look, Polish-Israeli cooperation in thriving to be in the government relations, trade ties, or civil society contacts, I can only see more of it in the future. Thank you for your attention. I'm now very pleased to invite uh, Ambassador Ronald Lauder to the microphone, President of the World Jewish Congress. Excellency Prime Minister Sekhina, Megan Center President Sir Herzl Markov, Moshe Ahrens and Justice Rubenstein, two men I admire greatly, members of diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It's a great honor to be with you tonight and pay tribute to Jan Kosky an extraordinary and inspiring person. I cannot think of a better person to represent the 25 years of the anniversary of resumption of diplomatic relations between Poland and Israel. I had the good fortune in 1997, 1998, I'm not sure which, I received a phone call one day and said that Jan Kosky was coming up from Washington, from Georgetown, and would be receiving an award from the Jewish nation. And would I give him the award? I thought about it for about half a second, and I said, yes, I would love to. And I came, first of all, <clears throat> Jan Kosky was a hero of mine as long as I can remember, because he stood up at a time when most people remain silent. I met him and spoke with him for a good 20 minutes, a half hour before the award, and he was everything I thought he would be, and then more. He represented the best of mankind, and he told me about his frustration that all the things he tried to tell the world, the world did not listen. And his last words were, how different it would be 
if people did listen to what I said. At least I guarantee that there would not, there would have been a Holocaust, would have been a very different place, and people would have listened. I also had a chance over the last 25, 30 years to be very involved with the Jewish community of Poland. Um, we have now schools in five or six cities. Um, everyone told me that there were no Jews left in Poland. There are many Jews left in Poland. Um, I'm sure it's not the same as it was, but um, frankly, they exist. Uh, I've watched what's happened to the Jewish people. But I'd like to tell a story, if I could, for a couple of minutes, about a very special evening in Warsaw. We know between September 1st, 1939, and January 1943, 70,000 Polish Jewish children between the ages of one month and 15 years old were given to Catholic families for safekeeping all throughout Poland. We have these numbers because the first thing that most Catholic families did was have the child christened. And we have the records, not the names, just the numbers. Um, and it was, we know during the war, 20,000 were found and killed, mainly boys, because of circumcision. We know after the war, approximately 20,000 came back, and many of them um, emigrated. And the ones that did not left during the time of Gomulka. But there is somewhere between 20 and 30,000 Jewish, and they're no longer children, adults, who didn't know they were Jewish because many of them grew up in towns where there was no Jewish people left, and their foster families felt that they should not tell them. But then, around when then later on as the foster parents got older they brought their child in they said i want to tell you your parents were not catholics but jewish and this was a revelation to them i heard the story and working with me was a polish rabbi by the name of haskell besser who grew up in Poland and left, interestingly enough, on September 1st, 1939. I sent him from town to town in Poland over two years, every place putting an advertisement in the paper that if you found out you're Jewish, come to such and such a hotel. In some place, places, 12 people came. In Katowice, 156 people showed up. So over a two-year period, we found something like 3,000 Jewish people who found out they were Jewish. 70% um, girls, 30% boys. And I found this an amazing story. But in 1987, I decided I'd like to invite 100 of them to dinner in Hotel Victoria in Warsaw. And they came. Uh, most of them was the first time they've ever been in the Jewish world, and they all were sort of very suspicious. We sat there. It was a big horseshoe table, and they were very, very silent. They were very shy. We got, they got there at 7.30, and by 9.30, by the time dessert, by the way, all the food was kosher, which was not easy. Uh, it came from Brooklyn and Vienna. Um, and tried getting kosher food through Polish customs in 1987. Um, but the fact is that uh, they were all very quiet. And then around 9.30, I said, this is not working. They're over. So I got Rabbi Besser, and I said to him, what would a um, Jewish mother have sung to their children in pre-World War II um, Poland. 
He says, very simple, there's one song, Vosikin Smith Mandan, Raisins and Almonds. So we did a quick rehearsal. I even sang better, I, I sang better than Rabbi Besser, which didn't say much. Um, anyway, we came out and he hit his glass and he said, in Polish, Ambassador Lauder and I were gonna sing a song. Anybody that knows the words, please join in. So he started singing. First, 10 people started singing. Then 20, then 50. By the time we got to Shlof Yidla Shlof, 80 of 100 people were singing a song that they heard from their Jewish mothers. Most of them they never knew, but it was in their subconscious. And it was an amazing evening because we sat there from 9.30 to 1.30 in the morning when everybody started telling their experiences. And it was, fab it was a very, very interesting thing and all the different experiences. And from the end of the evening, I said, what would you like to do? And they decided that they all wanted to be involved in Jewish life. And some of them became my teachers in schools one of them became the editor of uh, a paper, um, and uh, several of them were writers and they wrote books. Um, they, were, they were involved in TV and different things, and that was how the foundation was born. And today, their children are going to our schools, and it's absolutely amazing the effect. And we are still finding people um, up until today, uh, where now they're in their 60s, and then we're still finding people who are finding out and coming forth. Uh, we think the number, we'll never get the number 30,000, but we think there's as many as 20,000 who are finding out. The number is over 5,000 now who have actually been involved, and it's been an amazing thing for me. Um, but I must tell you, the Poland that I saw in 1987 and the Poland today are two completely different places. In 1987, Jewish people were always looking over their shoulder. Today, they're proud. And I came to the opening of the museum, the Poland Museum, and I remember the excitement. But what's fascinating, it wasn't Jews who were necessarily coming there. It was the most Polish people finding out and learning, and the result it was enormous. And it could not have been done without the um, Polish government but also the will of the people, and it's amazing. And I thank the government, and I thank the people for what it was. I also had several times met uh, John Paul II, um, His Holiness, and his love for mankind, and also love for the Jewish people, um, who he called his older brothers, and he did more to bring the church and the Jewish people together. And for that, we always thank him. And for that reason, I'd like to share one last concern. When, when John Ka Jan Kosky spoke to me, he spoke to me about how upset he was with the world's silence. There was silence again today. There was silence not about Jews, but about Christians. Christians are being killed in the Middle East. Christians are being killed all throughout Africa. Churches are being destroyed. Uh, Coptic Christians in uh, Egypt are being killed. Uh, we have 850,000 refugees today from Syria who are Christian. And the world is once again silent. And I look to Poland, I look to other countries to not be silent because we Jews know 
what happens when the world is silent. And again, it's, it's something that I think that we must do everything we can. I must tell you, on behalf of the Jewish people, but also on behalf of the 30,000 Jewish people in Poland, I say thank you and we really understand and we really care for what Poland did for the Jewish people today. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Lauder. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to ask our colleagues in the cabin to dim the lights, and uh, we will now have the privilege of seeing Karski and the Lords of Humanity. Thank you.